everybody. Good morning and welcome to episode 288 of the On Air Advocate, where we provide education, advocacy, and supportive services for special needs parents, caregivers, and those with different abilities, as well as complex medical conditions. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I am the host and producer of the On Air Advocate, and I am super excited if you are live here with us this morning or whether you are catching this on the replay. Now, as always, if you think any of the content we're talking about today could be relevant for anyone in your network or your circle, please hit the share button and share the love. Well, if you guys have been following along, you know that we are in our transition series, and I am so happy to welcome back one of our friends to the On Air Advocate Show, Chris. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> and Chris is here today to share some of those real life experiences that he's had. I think it's really important when we talk about the transition series to not just have organizations and colleges and things like that on, but those who have truly traveled the journey of transition and can give some feedback. So thank you, Chris, again. I'm, I'm so happy that you were willing to share this with our audience. Of course. Thank you for having me, Tammy. So Chris, to start out with, if you could take yourself back to when you were in that transition process and think about the things that might be suggestions for either young adults that are transitioning um, out of their high school programs um, or for maybe their parents to take into consideration as they're helping their young adults transition out. What would some of those things be that you think would be really important for um, young adults to know? For, first of all, First of all, when I was transitioning, it was 20 years ago. So let's mm -hmm. preface this by saying these are 20 right. year old suggestions, but right. but um, with DRS, I would advise that if you're not getting SSDI or any other kind of benefit mm -hmm. to, to um, have a parent go with you and talk to a DRS counselor mm -hmm. and see what is needed to always stand up for yourself at staffings, have a parent stand up with you, advocate for yourself. Three, three, you know, don't let anybody talk you out of your dreams because it can be fun. It can be a hard time if you do. Like for example, I wanted to work at the baseball stadium at the Kane County Cougars, and I got a job job there with vocational with the um, vocational class I was in after after I had quit my library job that they gave me. So they're like, "Well, that's only for athletes. You can't can't do that." I'm like, I'm like, I'm working in the souvenir shop, so it's a seasonal job, you know. Before I graduated. This is what I mean by don't let anybody talk you out of your dreams. They're like, what happens after seasonal? I said, well, let me worry about that. I'm a senior in high school, you know. Mm -hmm. Let me enjoy it. Let me enjoy it, please. So, so don't let anybody tell you it can't be done or you can't do it. The people that hired me at the Kane County Cougars were so nice. They hired me on the spot. They wanted, you know, me to come back every year for seven years after that. And wow. in the uh, in the vocational teacher said, Chris, you won't last a year there. You need you need job coaching. You need all this help. Don't let don't be afraid to try job coaching if it's right for you, but don't be afraid right. to say no either if it's not, if you don't feel comfortable with it. If it's not the right fit for you. And if it's I think not the right fit, yes. I think that's so important what you said, because whether it was 20 years ago or, you know, 40 years ago, self-advocating is so important and using your voice and sharing what, what are your passions, right? And what are your yeah. interests in, yeah. in doing and pursuing? Because if you don't tell them, they'll stick you in any old, any uh, job like retail or or they'll stick you in a library, they'll stick you anywhere where they can find a job unless you tell them, I'd like to try this or I'd like to try that. Right, and, and how did that experience, um, I know, sorry for um, interrupting, when you went to Disney, right? You did something yeah. with, 
Disney, how did that experience come full circle? Was that something that was through your school or through like the DVR or how did that good, come to be? Good, good question. Good question. First of all, I went to the College of DuPage, which is a junior college okay. here in Illinois. And you can go to the Disney College program oh. through junior colleges or any kind of any college if they if they have it at your school, mm -hmm. if they're still operating because of the pandemic, I'm not sure, but it was a great learning experience for me. I learned, you know, how to live on my own from the college program and the accessibility was second to none. They put me in an accessible apartment. I got to live with five other people without disabilities. So I got to see what both sides of the aisle were like and I got to explain, this is why I can do, this is why I can't do. And they, they pretty much worked with me with it. And that's how I learned, learned to live on my own for eight months. That's Disney awesome. puts you up in the housing, by the way. They take it out of your check. Okay. And then, because so they, um, how did they, re? because they relocated you for that time. So then did they like pay for airfare or you had to get your transportation down there? You had, or to, that work? You had to pick up the transportation for the airfare, but I felt it's a minor cause to pay for the experience I was getting. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. Most and definitely. you were getting college credit for that too. As well. Right, right. And um, I wanted to go back to when you said about making sure that you're part of those staffing meetings, just in case somebody um, wasn't quite, just clarifying that a little bit. Staffing, you mean like when you were in all of your, like your IEP meetings yes, and things IEP like that. Meetings, that you, yes. Yeah, that you were the one also standing up and making sure that you were actively involved in those meetings yeah okay so one of the the vocational teacher even said chris if you don't get a job that we choose for you we're going to keep you here till you're 21 i'm like no you are not <laughs> i'm like nope <laughs> sorry <laughs> because i went to disney on my 21st birthday so i would say it worked out pretty well yes and, you know, it's a good opportunity, obviously, for some, it's the right fit for them to stay in school till they're, you know, till they're 21. And for yeah. some not, and like you're saying is that you need to self advocate and use your voice. And if that's not the right mm -hmm. fit for you, making sure you're sharing that not only with your school and the staffing, but um, with your families as well. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, for a suggestion for improvement really quick. For, yeah, I know we were going to dive into that because I think yes. there's quite a bit of that. Even now, you can look right at 20 years later. Yes. There's still lots of improvement needed. Yeah, because we need to take, speak up and as people with disabilities or different abilities, special needs, whatever word you want to use, mm -hmm. and say, say this isn't a one size fits all fits all thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're not one size fits all. We're we're different people. Like everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we need to speak up and make sure people know that. Yeah. Right, because there's lots of in um, lots of improvements, obviously, that can be made in and more opportunities. And I see them now over the last maybe five years sporadically opening up like all of these coffee shops that yes. are to open up and where mm -hmm. even so many people in the special education space, right? They're seeing yep. that when these young adults transition out of high school, the opportunities are extremely limited. And I so trying, to, yeah, trying right. to create more opportunities. Yes. Yeah. And how they can best do that is by educating people about the ticket to work program, because there seems to be a mis misnom a mis uh, communication somewhere that the disabled people get fourteen hundred dollars a month on average. You know, I wish they would break that down mm -hmm. into two separate categories, people who 
became disabled when they were older, like 40 years old and above, or people who became disabled earlier in life, whether it's from a birth defect or, or earlier on in life and compared the two checks to show people that not everybody gets the same amount. Right. And that right. people can work while on disability. I've heard that, that some people think that it basically comes down to better education. Some people think that they don't need to work or they, but they should be working as much as possible. You know, it's about independence. Right, right. Everybody. And I think you're extremely accurate on that, that there is a lot of misconceptions as to the things that, you know, happen and even, even qualifying for different things. Um, I know that a lot of times when young adults are transitioning outside, a lot of people think, oh, there's all these organizations, right? Like Goodwill Industries and Easter Seals and whatnot that yeah. provide employment. The only uh, disclaimer to that is that employment you have to be eligible for. So yeah, most, when you transit, yeah, when you transition. Yeah, most, and most of it, you have to go through, sorry for cutting you off, Tammy. Uh, most of it, you have to go through DRS to get as well. Some right, of it, well, most and of you it. have to meet the criteria. So I think that that's yes. the big thing. And I just did a podcast on this, um, on entitlement services versus eligibility services. And yeah. really anything under the age of 18 falls into that entitlement area where there is safety measures around it and laws to protect that these things happen. Like everyone has the right to yeah. go to school, right? Everybody yeah. gets to go to grade school. Everybody gets to go to high school. But when yep. you graduate and go beyond, there is eligibility services, meaning every single thing you do, you have to qualify for and you have to fit into the perfect box that that organization or that that job or whatever that they're looking for. Um, and so it really changes the layout yep. of things, right? The landscape yep. of opportunity. Yeah, and, and you really need to be be straight with the, the DRS people, you have to tell them, I've interviewed before, this is why I can do, this is why, why I can't do, and sometimes some DRS people don't listen, but they need to hire people that actually care at DRS, some of it, mm -hmm. too, because I've run into that as well, where, where they won't even listen to you. I can tell them I've done and show them a resume of Disney this and that and they'll be like oh i must have misheard you you must have vacationed at disney no <laughs> please call well, disney in sure in well, reference I'm, to, um oh i sorry for interrupting you it's Chris. okay it's okay um, it's like well i have to work with you on interview skills i have to do this and this and this well i went to a service called ramp when i finally got disability benefits which is the ticket to work program, Ramp Sill Regional Access and Mobility Project is a service that, that treats you like an adult. You don't have to go through DRS for it. It's okay. more on its own. Center, Sill stands for Center for Independent Living for those that don't know. And what they do is they're outside of DRS, Department of Rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And well, and for the thing value. Chris is sharing in every state, they offer these same things, but they're under a different name a little bit. So like, yeah. so DRS for yeah. him is DVR for us in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. So it's really just the Department of Vocational Rehabilitation Services yeah. Um, yeah. that helps um, with employing like job coaches, um, helping with getting jobs, researching jobs, shadowing jobs, all of those things. So yeah. and then that ticket to work program, that is something that I, I don't know that here in Wisconsin we have. Um, and it might be called something different. Yeah, it's a national program, Tammy. It's under SSDI, okay. you know, Social Security Disability, or SSI can probably go on the ticket to work program. Not sure. You will have to look that up, but it should should be one and the same because it's national. Right, because maybe it is and they they just call it something different, like some states yeah. call it out. 
that they a little differently. That's where all of this, Chris had a great idea of having um, a whole resource where it just had links for all the different states and yeah. making it easily and accessible to find services. I wish there was yeah. something like that. So we just need to create it, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I wish the DR, the DRS would cre create it. In fact, on, on, you know, on like, um, on like uh, the disability work work site mm -hmm. on the disability works website. I'm not sure if you can pull that up under SSDI. Okay. It says what can you what can you do, and it shows a list of resources of of vocational rehabilitation providers in each state. It okay. Should. And you can go to like, for example, for me, it'd be Illinois. And most right. of these services, you don't even have to meet with them. You can meet with them over the phone if you're more comfortable doing that. Okay, no, and that can is work great. with you on interview skills over the phone. You don't have to go to places. Right, right. And I know in, um, I know before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite organization? My two favorite organizations, really quickly, mm -hmm. are Rampsill Number One, because okay. that's Regional Access and Mobility Project. There was a lady there named Hannah that helped me out greatly. She runs the Ticket to Work program over there, and she was like, "You're really good at interviewing." interviewing i don't know why the state put you through all this interview process and the second is aim cell it's basically the two center for independent living achieving independence and mobility center for independent okay. living only some have different services and some have like ticket to work and others have just resume writing and other things also, if you can find one, like like uh, Progress Center for Independent Living, for example, here has the transportation feature. You can learn how to use transportation. They have travel training. The problem is each cell has its own different different uh, thing. Different um, thing. You can use different cells for different things okay. Okay. like one you might use for a housing list if if only they were all together where you could get services from okay like all of them all right and i also um wanted to when me and chris were talking before the show we had talked about that i wanted to know his favorite services but if you guys that are viewing today or watching this on the replay have any favorite organizations or services that you have utilized that you think are top notch that do a great job please drop it below in the comments um, from whatever social media um, site that you're watching this from that would be so incredibly helpful and so with that chris before we wrap up completely i would love for you to give the the audience one last thought if you had one thing that you want these these young adults that are transitioning to remember one last thought is as walt disney said if you can dream it you can do it please don't let anybody uh anybody anybody discourage you from your dreams whatever they may be i love it that is right that is right. So keep on dreaming, keep on pursuing, self-advocate, all the good stuff. Thank you, Chris, for being mm -hmm. back on the show again. It was great to see you um, yep. and spend Thanks. the last little bit with you and for being a part of our transition series. So with that, you guys, I will be back in probably about another half an hour or so with our next interview up for today. So thanks again, Chris. Thank you so much, Tammy. All Have right. a great day, bye -bye. everybody. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.